All right, good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining this morning to uh, this very snappy 15 Google Classroom tips in 15 minutes. My name is Chris Betcher. I'm on the Google for Education team based here in Sydney. Let's get on with it. So I have 15 tips for you today on using Google Classroom in your classroom uh, as you return back to the 2023 school year. So these are the tips. There's a little summary there of what we're going to talk about, but I will take you through them one by one. I'll try and be really brief. Uh, I've created a slide deck here and each slide has a short description of the thing and a short video that I made to explain it. So um, I'm going to be going pretty quickly, but you can always come back and revisit these slides or this recording. All right, uh, number one, reorder your classes on the main page. You can reorder classes. So pop over here to Classroom and show you what I mean. Um, when you come into Google Classroom, you see your classes on the page like this. Some people don't realize if you click on a class, you can drag it to a new location. So you can put these classes in whatever order you like and rearrange them however you wish. That's tip number one. Tip number two is that you can customize your class header. So if I come in here and look at the uh, this demonstration class, for example, um, it has a nice little picture at the top. This picture is called a header. You can customize that with the customize button. We actually provide you with a whole bunch of images for different things, so you can change to whatever. A um, little tip for you, you might not have realized, but if you create, say, a science class, it will automatically try and allocate a science picture if you put in an English class it will try and do an Englishy picture and sports class and so on it'll try and automatically pick a suitable picture um, but if you don't like any of those you can click this upload photo button and you can actually go and find your own photo I don't know if I've got one here or not um, yeah we'll do this one so there's a picture there so when you bring it in it'll upload a picture and then it will actually help you crop it to the correct um, format which is obviously wide and skinny so you can do it like that uh, and we'll just do that and there, there we go um, so that is how you add that I won't actually change that because I kind of like it the way it is you can also also change the color scheme down the bottom as well just by choosing any of those and that will affect the color of the um, the, the theme throughout it I think I like that color for this one so we'll do that all right so that is how you change all that stuff uh, tip number three is you can generate a meet link for your class. You notice on the front page here, there is a little button here that says meet with a join button. I've turned this on. If you don't see this, you need to go into the settings, which is just in the gear wheel there. And down here it says meet and you actually just generate a meet link. Once you generate a meet link, here's the interesting thing about the way this works. Normal, a meet call like this one we're in right now, um, uh, you know, because we're all adults, it behaves a certain way. But for children in a, in a school, you want it to behave slightly differently. And this one here behaves in a very special way. If you have this meet link right here on the classroom page, students cannot join this one until a teacher joins first. So must have a teacher first before any students can come in. And at the end of the call, when everybody leaves, that meeting gets burned and nobody can come back into it. So so long as you're using the meet link provided through classroom, it's a special kind of meet link. and it will only operate with the teacher present. So there's no worries about uh, unsupervised students. Um, this one here, fine tuning how the stream works. Okay, so the stream, which is this front page here on the, uh, on the classroom, uh, and you can see you can leave a post, which is where someone starts a conversation, and then comments, which is where people then respond to that conversation. And you might be wondering, like, who can start posts? Who can comment? What if I don't want my students to be able to post? What if I don't want anyone to be able to post or comment? Well, you've got control over that too. Up here in the gear wheel, where all the settings are kept, you've got this option here, stream, and you can choose whether only students can post and comment, uh, sorry, whether every, basically everybody can post and comment, students and teachers. Students can only comment but not post, or only teachers can post and comment. So you can fine tune the way that works. Uh, it's a good idea to do that. While you're in here too, just also notice classwork on the stream. Um, you, you can choose when you post a piece of classwork, whether it appears in the stream or not. Some teachers like it too, some teachers don't. You've got the option, so you can either show the whole assignment as it pops into the stream, show just a short mini condensed version of it, or just not show it at all. Personally, I don't show it at all. I just teach my kids they should just go to the classwork page to do that. <laughs> yes, Jenna, good point. Uh, I, I, I like the middle option there where I can start a conversation and students can respond, but I don't necessarily want students starting conversations because it gets kind of crazy. Uh, all right, our next tip is, uh, let's have a look here, is um, create grading categories. Okay, so you probably know inside uh, Google Classroom there is a grade book 
And as you create assignments and work and things for students, it goes into the gradebook. This one's just taking a moment to load. This is all just dummy student data in here. This is a demonstration classroom. So, you know, there's a lot of uh, sort of dodgy data. But what you can do is if you just go back to that main page again and go to the gear wheel and scroll to the very bottom, there's a section here about how those marks are handled. So when you put grades in the gradebook, you can either have it not calculate a mark for you altogether. You can just get it to calculate a mark based on total points and we'll just basically add everything up as it currently stands. Or if you want, you can create mark categories down the bottom. And you can do that by just clicking this add mark category button. And, and create whatever categories you like. So you can see here, I've got classwork, exams, homework, and thinking, and they're weighted certain ways. Um, so if a student hands in a classwork assignment, it's worth twice as much as a homework assignment, for example. Um, you can set this up any way you like. Obviously, it has to add up to 100. Um, and if you choose this option, weighted by category, then as Classroom calculates a final grade, it will actually take all of that into account as well. So you can weight the things. Um, you can also choose whether you want to show the overall mark to students or not. So that's some classwork settings there. Uh, no, I don't want to do anything there. Okay. Right, next tip is that you can add a display image to stream posts. So let me show you what I mean by that. I can put a post in here, so I can, I can leave a message for my class. Hi, class. Right, and I can add an image. Now, it used to be, uh, if you've been using Classroom for a little while, when you added an image, it would go in as kind of an attachment down the bottom, but it wouldn't actually show the image. It would just sort of be an attachment. Uh, one of the things you can do now, if I upload a file, uh, and I've got this picture here I can sure I can use. It's probably this one right here, this cartoon. Let's use that one. So it's just going to take that cartoon image, it's going to upload it in, add it to the post, and you can see it's added right there. That's how it would normally show up previously, but we've now got this ability to turn it into what's called a display image. Um, if you don't want a display image, you can remove it. And if you've got more than one uh, image attached to a post, you can choose which one is the display image. You can only have one, um, but this is going to be a display image. You can see now when I post that, it actually will put the post in and include the image as a display image. So people will get to actually see the image, not just see that there's an image attached. Okay, so uh, it just makes the stream a prettier, more visual place, and a lot of students really like that. Okay, we will carry on to the next tip, which is to mute or unmute students. Uh, sometimes, like in the real world, we get some students who maybe need a bit of time out. Uh, maybe they've done something inappropriate, or maybe they're talking too much, or may whatever it might be, you might want to mute a student from the class. Um, so what you can do is just pick a student. I'll pick Helen Highwater here, and we can go to the three dots next to her name and mute that student. And when you mute a student, it doesn't prevent them from participating in the classwork. It only uh, prevents them participating in the social side of the class. So they can't reply to work, they can't comment or post, but they can still do their work, okay? It's important to know. When you mute a student, that student gets a little red mark next to their name. It's like a little speaker with a line through it. Um, and you can tell that they are muted from the class. When they've had their time out or they've <laughs> repented for their sins or whatever it might be, you can unmute that student and they can come back into the class and carry on as normal. So wouldn't it be nice if you could do that in real life? Um, all right, next tip is that you can enable guardian summaries. Also on this classwork page, you'll see on the side here, it says invite guardians. Now, if you don't see invite guardians, your school or school system may have turned this off. So if you don't see it, don't panic. Just means someone's made a decision that they don't want to use this feature. But if you do see it, what you can do is click on that link and add an email address for the parent or guardian of that student. And then in the settings, so long as you've enabled in here, Guardian Summary, so long as you've turned that on, and I will just add that, so long as that setting is turned on, what will actually now happen is every week, you can set it to do it every day, but I think that's overkill. So every week, uh, it will automatically generate an email and send that email to the guardians or parents <laughs> of that uh, student with a summary of what work was missing, what work was late, what work's coming up. 
Uh, so it's a really great way to keep in uh, keep that line of communication open with the parents, and it does it all automatically, so you don't have to think about it and create the letters that go home to parents. Classroom will just do that for you. Okay, next tip is that you can use the best task type. Uh, I could spend ages talking about this one, so I'll just summarize it by saying that on the classwork page where you create all your work and you click this create button, there is assignments, quizzes, questions, materials, and reusing things. Let's talk about the first four. Assignments, quizzes, uh, questions and materials are four different types of things you can ask your student to do. And these four things work slightly differently. As a quick example, if you want to give your student something to do, in other words, you intend to grade it, you intend to look at it, give them feedback on it, grade it in the end, that would be an assignment. If you want to ask them a quiz, it would obviously be a quiz. A question is when you want to pose a single question to students. It can be multiple choice or, or short answer. And material is when you want to just give your students something. Here's a PDF. Here's a link to a video. Here's a document I want you to have. They don't need to do anything with that document. You're just giving them something as material. Okay. So just be aware that these four things are different and they behave differently and they have different settings. And if you've never used some of them, um, try them out. Just create an, uh, a question if you've never done one. Create some material if you've never done one and so on. I would guess that 90% of what you do is probably assignments, but it depends how you teach. All right. Just be aware that there are different task types and know which one is the right one for what you're trying to do. Um, reusing tasks, I mentioned, you can come down here and reuse a post. So if you've done some work in another class and rather than reinvent the wheel, that thing we do all the time in schools, uh, we can reuse that post. And I can go in here and I can go into, actually I'll just, I, all of my classrooms that I have access to will be listed and I can go into any of those classes. I'll go into this one and I can pick a, a previous task that I've used. So maybe this, this science question here about the backwards brain bicycle, fascinating video if you've never seen it and reuse that and it will take that task that's previously been made and reused and packages it up including all the titles and descriptions and attachments and you know all the everything you've done with it and this up that keeps jumping back to life um and just reuse it and you can you can hit the button there and it will fire away so yes do try the reuse task button uh we've got the ability to add rubrics to an assignment so when you do create an assignment let's see if i've got one here i can use Maybe this essay here might be a good example. Um, let's go in and edit this task so you can see. Okay, good, excellent. So here is a task. It's a it's a RE essay that um, was set up just as an example. Uh, it's got a rubric attached to it. You can see if I click that rubric, you can see this one's being based on persuasion, originality, spelling, and grammar. And each one of those has a performance scale with a description of what the student's supposed to be able to do. You guys know how rubrics work. You can create these rubrics directly inside Classroom. You can reuse an existing rubric if you've got one. You can import it from a spreadsheet. It does need to be a special kind of spreadsheet, so um, we might unpack that at, at a different time. But yes, you can attach a rubric. It does two things. It helps guide the student as to what they need to know in order to complete the task to a satisfactory standard. Um, and it also helps you grade the task at the end as well because the rubric comes into play when you're on the grading screen. All right. Uh, so yes, please experiment with those rubrics. Um, originality checks we've also got on this page as well. Let me just go back here. Uh, to edit that task again, you can see there is a checkbox down the bottom that says check for plagiarism, originality. And when you tick that box, um, what it will do is it will run um, uh, an originality check. It will compare that student's work to other stuff that's out on the internet and try and find instances where the student maybe has borrowed something from somewhere else and maybe hasn't done a very good job of <laughs> um, summarizing. Uh, uh, yes, yeah, so that, that will happen automatically. It will give the student three, um, three goes at uh, checking their work. And if you're in a Google Fundamentals school where you're using the free version of Workspace, you can use that on up to five assignments per class. And if you're in a school that's using the plus edition of Workspace, you can actually run that on an unlimited number of classes. So you have complete unlimited use of the originality checks as many times as you like. Uh, just getting towards the end here, we've got um, we've got try classroom add-on. 
you might notice down the bottom of classroom let me go back into the create page here create assignment uh, you've got for example this section here called add-ons and now I've now here's a caveat on this one these need to be turned on by your system administrator so if you don't see anything in that add-on box it's because your system admins have not turned anything on for you to use okay which may be the case because it's still fairly new uh, things so they came in end of last year um, but I've added a bunch of here just so you can see the sorts of things I'm talking about and you can see things like Sora um, we've got Edpuzzle, WeVideo, WordWall, Adobe Express, Kahoot so these are all other EdTech tools you're probably familiar with and by having them as an add-on inside classroom what you do is you allow those things to operate directly within the classroom environment your classroom login becomes the login for those tools so you don't need two logins uh, and when the student goes to do that work, they do it directly inside the classroom. They don't need to be off on a third party site. It just integrates everything together in the classroom environment. So uh, if you've got some available to you, I'd suggest have a little play with them and see what you think. Uh, so I've only got two tips left. Import comments into the comment bank. So when you are grading student work, and again, let me try and find a good example here. Okay, this one will do. So here are two students that have handed in a piece of work. So I'm going to go to Crystal Ball's work and click on that. And you'll see that her work comes up here like so. You can see this one was flagged for an originality check. And you can actually see here is the originality check result. There's 16 flagged passages. So not a lot of uh, original work in this particular piece of work. I'll go back to the student about that. But this button here will show you the comment bank. And you can see there is a bunch of comments in here. Now, you can add comments to the comment bank by clicking on the Add to Bank link at the top here and just typing a new comment. In. I like what you have done here, right? So you can add your own comments. So I will correct the spelling on that just quickly. Uh, and you can do that. And that adds that in as a comment. And you can see that's now available in my comment bank. If you'd like to add lots of comments, so you might have an existing list of uh, standard comments you use in your school. Um, you can just paste all of them in there, and so long as they're separated by line breaks, um, they will all go in as comments. It will just import the whole lot. In order to use a comment, a um, nice little tip is if you select a piece of text, so let's say this is a piece of text that I want to give some feedback onto the student, I can select the text, choose the add comment link here, and then I can either just type in something manually, or if I type a hash symbol it actually brings up all of the different comments and will continue to filter those comments based on what I type so for example I know I've got a comment in there about something being whimsical so I want to leave that comment so I start typing whimsical and there it is it comes up and I just really quickly add that comment to the comment once you get used to the comment bank and that ability to type the hash symbol and a few characters from the comment you can have hundreds of comments and really quickly get to the ones you need uh, and it really speeds up grading and the last tip for you is to schedule work to multiple classes and I'll give you an example of that let's just go back to my classroom and I'm going to switch to I've got this year 9 English class here and I'm going to go into the classwork page and I'm going to set an assignment for my students maybe this one here Okay, let's go back to edit this one. Okay, so here's an assignment that I want to give to my students. And in fact, I actually teach year 9A, 9B, and 9C, and I'm giving them the same assignment. What I can do is say, I'm going to send this to all three classes. So 9A, and 9B, and 9C. So it's going to go to all three classes. But I teach 9A on a Monday, and 9B on a Wednesday, and 9C on a Thursday, and I don't want them getting the work until they're ready for it. What I can do is go up to the button here and I can schedule this work and when I schedule the work I get this new dialog box here that tells me okay 9a when would you like that to go out oh, I'd like that to go out on Monday so we'll do Monday for that one and then so on and I can set it a due date and 9c I can set for Wednesday and 9b I can set for Thursday and they can each have different due dates they can go into different topic settings if you want so when you're scheduling work to multiple classes now you can actually get it to drop into those classes uh, at the appropriate time rather than everyone getting it on Monday even though they won't be needing it until Thursday and there you go so that ladies and gentlemen that is my 15 tips uh, if you'd like to access these tips as a YouTube playlist I've made a short video on each one of them and the link is right there and of course the easiest way to get that link is to get these slides and these slides are right here at bit.ly slash 15 classroom tips 
and I don't know how I went for time. I think I went a little bit over my 15 minutes, but I tried to stick to it. But um, it's really hard to do 15 in 15. Uh, but I went as quick as I could. Hopefully that was useful. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day. I may see some of you this afternoon for our final 15 tip session, which is 15 Google Docs tips in 15 minutes or thereabouts. Um, so I will stop the recording. Have a wonderful day uh, and enjoy the start of school.